What we must understand about the appeal of Coney Island is that it's open and free. It is a place where you let your hair down and relax. The entire sphere of ethnic, economic, religious, all the facets that make up the city of New York and of the world for that matter, are here at the same time. You see every part of society mixing and enjoying each other there on problems. It's like the parallel would be to many people who went to the World's Fair. You never noticed who they were, where they were from. It just were all there together having a ball. And that's what Coney Island has always been. That's what makes it unique. It's because this is a place that reflects everything at one time in one space. And um, gosh, without it, there ain't no New York. Over the years, there have been many land grabs in Coney Island, and that's because several times in history, Coney Island's been the most valuable property on Earth. Right now, Coney Island is going through its latest evolution. It's a critical time. I don't think it's ever been this critical, actually, because there's a developer who's buying up most of the central amusement area. And a single owner is the most dangerous thing for Coney Island because if he goes bankrupt and somebody else takes it over, they'll go for whatever they can cram in there. You know, the, the condos will sprout like mushrooms. Yes, I sold the property. I didn't sell the business. All the talk was that, uh, you know, he was going to be doing demolition and construction, and we just didn't think we could stay in business for three to five years of demolition and construction. It just looked like it was going to be massive. So we had turned the developer down originally when he made his offer because we just didn't want to sell. But by, you know, close to a year and a half, two years later, uh, it looked like we couldn't stay and sustain the demolition and construction plan, so we did sell. All the developers, and there are more than four, they are waiting to see what changes the city makes in adjusting the C7 zoning. The rezoning process takes an entire calendar year from when it starts, and it hasn't started yet. Things aren't going to be built until um, that has happened. I mean, rightfully, we should get another season. Like, we should, because they're not, he knows he's not going to be building for next year. And Joe isn't, the equities isn't returning anybody's calls. I feel like everybody is just like in denial about what's happening. Right. So, the purpose of the demonstration would be to have him sign the lease for the remaining people that are out here. Time to get right. everybody, all right. of Coney Island, like, keep it this way. Because right. what are we going to do if we have leases for next year and there's no Astro Land? Like, right. are people even going to come out here? Like, right. What's that going to mean for our businesses? Right. So. You know all of those really cool sound and movies you often miss? The indie films that get shown at a film festival, and of course you'd love to go, but that is the weekend your cousin's getting married in Baltimore? Always. Yeah. Well, there's nothing like the buzz of a film festival screening, when that nice couple sitting next to you might just be the filmmaker's parents. But if you still can't make it, we have a solution. And surprise, it's Brooklyn Independent Media. We aim to be the small screen alternative, giving those great indie films the exposure that they deserve, and you another chance to see them. And with us are four of our partners in that endeavor. Adam Shartoff is the creator of the podcast Film Wax Radio, and a frequent guest on the show. Welcome back, Adam. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Aaron Gleason, you may recognize, is the co-founder of the Crown Heights Film Festival. Thanks for joining us again, Thanks, Aaron. Aaron. And next to Aaron is Kwebe Koti, the CEO and director of programming at the Bushwick Film Festival. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. And a newbie. Welcome <laughs> Heather Freudenthal, who's here for the first time. <laughs> and she's the creator, the woman who's doing it all for the Sunday Film Series. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's awesome to have you all here no, at the same time. I feel like, you know, this is a, we're partners in crime and we're gonna be conspiring to take over the world. Discover. It, it is a movement. So speaking about the movement that we are all pushing forward, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, festival that you are curating? Sure. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of the Crown Heights Film Festival, along with Pedro Marti. And I'm actually a visual artist, and I work in architecture, and I'm an independent curator. And my co-founder, he works in film. So he's a cameraman and photographer. And together, we formed this festival as a social forum. Uh, so basically, it's a place for people to hang out and come to our happy hour and get to know each other. Um, 
basically it was in response to the gentrification of Crown Heights. So people can get a chance to meet one another and discuss film. And there are a lot of filmmakers in the neighborhood and we we're discussing this all earlier with the lack of cinemas, mm -hmm. um, especially in Central and those parts of Brooklyn. It's really hard to find venues. So when we were um, talking to local filmmakers in the neighborhood, we're like, well, where can we see your work? And they'd say Manhattan or another city or yeah. hey, I'll just show you on my phone, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> So that's how it all started, and it's, it's really great to see things evolve, and now, um, and now work with you guys here and bring it into TV, which totally expands the audience and offers more opportunities to have interviews with filmmakers and Well, and speaking so of interviews fun. with filmmakers, Adam Shartov, <laughs> you've talked to lots of filmmakers, and we have to mention your uh, podcast, Film Wax Radio, is celebrating its 200th podcast currently. That's right. Yes. It's a big deal, man. Yeah, That's a huge right. deal. It's 200 episodes. Thank you very much. No, no, it's true. Uh, 200, 200 this week with a uh, guest, Barbara Koppel. Right. But, but uh, there's still a very, my commit, I have a very big commitment to uh, Brooklyn filmmakers, and uh, it starts with Brooklyn. So, um, you know, I, I just chose films for uh, the film series that are Brooklyn filmmakers, right. and, you know, hopefully as much Brooklyn content as well. Because uh, there's just so much of it, there's no excuse not to show more Brooklyn film. So they're, they're making it in Brooklyn, but they're not. They weren't showing it in Brooklyn. But yeah, yeah. I know that's been a subject on your podcast as well about places where I know you did something yeah. with one of our producers about great theaters in Brooklyn showing oh, local right. work too. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Small. No, it's very true. They, there is a, a de definitely a dearth of, of, of venues, so you have to get creative. But that presents all sorts of other uh, problems and challenges yeah. if you're showing in a school auditorium where acoustics are sometimes challenging or yes. in a, but they're great places for people to congregate and you can have great events but we should have more theaters or you could invite the, your friends over and watch Brooklyn Independent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. Film so, but, but, but maybe this will also have a, a second sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, another uh, uh, motivating factor mm -hmm. for those. Catalyzing you know, effect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, look at all our films now. Give us more venues to play it. But yes, let's start with uh, Brooklyn Media. So, Heather, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Sunday film series and the sort of the program you're curating for that? Yeah, um, well basically um, the Sunday Film Series is a very, very independent uh, film series. As you mentioned, I kind of run and curate it by myself. So yeah. it's, it's kind of fun, but it's also very challenging. Um, and as much as I really admire film festivals and you know aspire to be a part of that as well, one of the things that I look for when I'm curating films are not necessarily um, the newest films or the films that came out this year. I think there is so much independent film that hasn't been seen, even if yeah. it's a film that's 10 or 20 years old. And so um, for me, it's really just when I get in contact with a filmmaker and they're like, oh, can you take a look at my film? If I love it, I show it. Um, I think it's an easier sell if it's newer because people are like, oh. Everyone's I'm, obsessed with the premiere. Yeah, the premiere. it's like premiere and I've never seen <laughs> yeah. it. And of course, then the filmmaker has all their friends and family who are coming out to see that. Whereas, whereas if it's an older film, it's a little bit harder to sell. Yeah. But um, I really, my favorite part, my favorite part of it is afterwards when we get to do the Q and A or a workshop with the filmmaker and the audience afterwards, and I can tell that the audience is just so engaged and they're so they're kind of like, why didn't I have an opportunity to see this before? It's years kind of ago, yeah. yeah, years ago or just a venue or um, you know, as Adam said, just like more places that are willing to show these films. So. Well, if you've never seen it, it's a premiere to you, right? Exactly. But Cueve, I know you are curating right now for Bushwick. Well, well Bushwick, and it's very quickly <laughs> Adam's a gentrifying <laughs> place. It's just absolutely, we're making our Bushwick yeah. beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> Bushwick is beautiful. Bushwick is amazing. Um, yeah, you know, we are in the process of accepting submissions to the festival. Uh, the Bushwick Film Festival, it's a, it, we're an arts organization in Bushwick, Brooklyn, clearly. And uh, we pretty much celebrate like talented and passionate filmmakers who pretty much like overcome all the independent film obstacles like funding, distribution, and shoot their films. Um, another thing that we do is we uh, act as like a bridge between film and, and community. Like we develop a lot of education programs um, and we also create spaces for the community to share their, their voice. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, that's what we're doing. We're pretty excited. This is our seventh festival. Right. Uh, I've been running it since I was 23, so it took me through, <laughs> through my 20s. Uh, but yeah, it's an exciting time for us. Uh, the submissions just opened, and uh, the early deadline is April 15th, and the late deadline is uh, June 30th, and the mm -hmm. festival is October 2nd to the 5th. Very nice. Yeah. Seven year. Are you feeling itchy over there? Uh, seven Are you happy years. happy with the growth? How's it no, going? I'm so happy with the growth. It's been a very organic growth. Um, we, it's, it's, I've approached it as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. so uh, we pretty much figured out how things worked as we went on each year. We've made a lot of mistakes, but it's been successful. The neighborhood really welcomes it, and there's, we all know, lots of artists and uh, lots of gentrification happening <laughs> as well. Um, and that's why we, we do the bridge between film and community thing. But yeah, we're really happy with where we are right now, Very and cool. we, we plan on going for another seven years. <laughs> on, onwards <laughs> and upwards. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the culture um, in Brooklyn right now such that, you know, not only are we Brooklyn independent media, but why is all this talent drawn here and making it so easy for us to sort of tap into it? What is the beauty of Brooklyn that brings all the talent here, in your opinion? What isn't the Brooklyn? Like, what is the beauty of Brooklyn? I don't what? know. I, it's, I mean, it's, I'm kind of biased because I grew up here, so I kind of think Brooklyn is the most fabulous place anyway. And so... Um, I'm jealous. I don't, <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible place to live. I mean, so much so that I have, you know... I've noticed that I have friends that don't necessarily work or live in Brooklyn, but for whatever reason, they still kind of say they do because it's just like they want that association. Um, it's just... There's just such a thriving community of people here, and I think it just, you know, it kind of catches on. You know, if people hear what's going on, they want to migrate here. Right. Um, I'm kind of worried about the, you know, skyrocketing costs of living and how that's going to affect um, the artists. And Does that show up in the work? Like, you guys are curating, and you have that specific bent where you started looking at the effects of gentrification, and you have mm -hmm. the bridge between community and the artists. But, Adam, even, is that showing up in the work? Is it finding its way in? Um, that tension? I think it is in a way that a lot of filmmakers are becoming even more independent, and I'd love to hear all of your thoughts about this, mm -hmm. where with technology, right. they can do more with less money, but at the same time, it's more expensive to live and to produce and find the time to do that and find the resources. So there's this struggle that's happening there. Right. Um, you, you know, you don't necessarily need these huge film productions anymore to do something pretty amazing. Yeah, but so um, you can do like a one-man show if you want to. Take an uh, opportunity. I think yeah. that's not unusual. I think uh, maybe the you talk about so much is going on, and so many filmmakers have landed in Brooklyn. I think part of that probably started because New York being the cut kind of the center for media in general, yeah. and then we're all kind of migrated over. It was a little less expensive to live then. Um, so but and, now and each, but to get mm -hmm. to your, all our, what we're talking about is a lot of filmmakers rely now on each other mm -hmm. for free labor, for inspiration, yeah. for we all work on your, you know, it's like community. a community, very much so. So that is taken off in a big way, you know, and there are pockets of it elsewhere, but Brooklyn seems to be uh, unless I'm mistaken, the biggest pocket, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a, yeah, we rely on each other a lot, but filmmakers kind of have to do a lot of things to, to pull together a career, mm -hmm. cobble together a career, we all do. Uh, you know, and that might mean working, doing commercial work for however many clients and doing full-time work. And then also filmmakers are compelled to take their films on the road and act yeah. as a, you know, um, their, their Barnum their, thing. Going. Yeah, their Barker, the circus. <laughs> but I know they have to travel. It's a lot of time to spend not making another film. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, to take that three years in between, possibly, in order to get enough resources together to start a new project. Uh, it, it, there should be more resources like, you know, this one right here. Well, pat yourselves on the back a little. Bit. <laughs> 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 we're, we're pat on the shoulder. Yeah, we're more. about to blow things up here. Really put in independent films from our neighbors on the TV. I think it was a little different for Bushwick, um, particularly. Like I, I mean, I've lived in New York for 13 years and seven years in Bushwick. And Bushwick particularly got a lot of artists. It's like the migration that happened, like from the Lower East Side to Williamsburg to Bushwick. And particularly for Bushwick, I think our proximity to the L train is what got the, the, my, the artists going there. Like I used to live in Williamsburg, and then when that sort of went south, like right. we all just sort yeah. of moved on we'll over, like down, down. down the L train, you know, moved mm -hmm. on another road. Um, so that's what brought a lot of the artists to Bushwick, and that's 
and that's that's where we are right now, you yeah. know. Um, and in terms of showing up in the work, we do get a lot of documentaries that talk about the gentrification and um, that uh, sort of comment on what 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 the tension is is like right now for artists in in these areas. Yeah. I, um I can talk about this for hours, so just stop me <laughs> well, if you need to. we got two I just wanted to add that one of the really interesting things about Brooklyn as a city is that people take chances on each other. Mm. If you meet somebody in a bar or yeah. on your, you know, hanging out on your stoop or just walking down the street, like, oh, hey, I do this. Oh, that's interesting. Let's talk. It actually happens. Yeah. Mm. That doesn't necessarily happen in other cities, at least where I've lived. Or, or even in Manhattan, right? It's um, Brooklyn's a, it's a very sociable. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's a, place where a lot of go getters. Everybody so go -getters. Mixes. Yeah. yeah, and you just and you never know what people are up to until you start talking to them, and then and then the magic happens. And I think that has a lot to do with it and the draw yeah. as well. Okay, now you you are still taking submissions, and when are they that we just about are to start? About to start taking submissions. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're going to announce that on our website, which okay. is crownheightsfilms.org. Uh, probably mid-April, we're going to open up for submissions, and the festival is in October. You feeling excited this year? I'm very excited. All right, yes. Aaron started it <laughs> off, but I want everyone to share how folks can tune in to 200 or get in touch with you oh, or for all of your projects, but kick us off. Sure, sure, thank you. Uh, well, it's filmwaxradio.com, which is just takes you to the Rooftop Films website. Uh, I partner with them on the podcast, and uh, um, that is the easy... Oh, you, and of course, I would ask people to subscribe on iTunes. Yeah. It's a free thing, but two clicks. Makes easy. a lot yeah, very fast, easy to do, but got a lot of amazing shows coming up and uh, very excited to be uh, moving on to two oh one and nice. beyond. <laughs> and beyond <laughs> Miss yeah. Freudenthal, how can folks get in on the Sunday act? Uh, really, really easy, super independent, Sundayfilmseries.com. Um, all the information is on there. If you're a Facebook y person, it's uh, <laughs> Facebook.com slash Sunday Film Series. And because um, it's just me, it's really my email address is on there. So if you want to make a submission, it's just emailing me. Um, if I get back to you, it means I'm interested. So. <laughs> you heard that. Simple. Spoken like a lady film <laughs> I'll get back to you if I'm interested. <laughs> Uh, well, the Bushwick Film Festival right now, we're having a Be a Part of 2014 campaign. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can be a contributor, you can be a sponsor, you can be a filmmaker, a new media artist, and you just go to www.bushwickfilmfestival.com and then on the menu option, there's a Be a Part of 2014 campaign that you can just click on. And uh, that's how... April 15th, early. It, um, yep, no, early deadline, April early 15th. Deadline. Uh, the regular deadline is June 30th, and the festival is October 2nd to the 5th. Lovely. <laughs> and one more time, how we can get in touch with Crown Heights Film Fest. Uh, basically, just visit our website, uh, crownheightsfilms.org, and we'll be announcing the submission schedule in mid or mid April. Awesome. All right. I'll see you at the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Some popcorn. And you guys are invited. Yeah. You heard that. Well, I will most free, certainly free be. Right. For you guys. Don't act like you're you don't know us when we show up because we come out. <laughs> okay, my partners, my fellow partners in crime.